All right, it is 2 p.m. and today is uh, June 11, 2020. This is a meeting of the Board of Trustees of Weatherford College. <coughs> We're meeting in the Aline Strain Community Room of the Doss Student Center, which is located at 225 <coughs> College Park Drive, Weatherford, Parker County, Texas, to consider and act on the posted agenda. A quorum is present, and uh, I will call this meeting to order, and if you will bow your heads, I'll ask our invocation. Holy God, we are grateful for Weatherford College, for its commitment, its efforts, and the dedication that gives all students a, an opportunity to learn, to grow, to achieve higher education. And all this in a setting where people's lives are important and do matter. We pray that today, in this time of overwhelming turmoil, people will make efforts, find ways to achieve clearer thoughts, uh, rational understanding, pursue wholesome, healthy, fair values, recognize, endorse, and commit to changes that are so badly needed in personal and spiritual lives. As trustees, we ask that you grant us wisdom and good judgment as we make decisions for Weatherford College today. Guide and direct us as we discharge our duties. Protect us all from <coughs> disease, destruction, uh, damaged health, and even death in this time of pandemic. Uh, bless and comfort those who suffer with fears and concerns and so badly need relief and reassurance. We pray for the better lives of all people now at this time and as we move forward. Amen. Amen. All right. The, the uh, agenda on the very... Second item on the agenda is open forum for individuals not on the agenda, and I do believe we have nothing. Uh, no one wants to speak on any subject in open forum. We'll move to third agenda item, President's report, and ask President Farmer to uh, proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman and members of the Weatherford College Board of Trustees, I would like to give a few brief recognitions, employee notices, and an enrollment update. Recognitions. I am honored to welcome WC Distinguished Alumnus Fred Sanders as our new Director of Jazz Studies. Mr. Sanders brings more than 30 years of experience in both music performance and education. I would also like to recognize Anna Nichols, Adam Finley and our entire commencement committee for their work on the forthcoming June 20th commencement ceremony at Kangaroo Stadium. They have put a tremendous amount of work into ensuring that the event is both safe and celebratory. Employee notices. D DMAC Local requires the college president to provide the names of contract employees that have resigned since the last board meeting. In accordance with this policy, the following individuals have submitted resignations. Earl Dromgool, the Transportation Services Truck Driving Instructor, has resigned with an effective date of 6-13-2020. Maxine Hanks, Director of Financial Services, has retired with an effective date of 8-31-2020. Uh, Marilyn St. Clair has retired, an instructor in technology services with a, an effective date of 5-9-2020. And John Wyatt, a computer AV technician, has retired with an effective date of 5-31-2020. We thank Earl, Maxine, Marilyn, and John for their service and wish them the very best in future endeavors. Enrollment update. Our official summer one session enrollment was a slight year-to-year -year decrease of 14 students 
with a total of 1,292 students enrolled on census date and an increase of 5.48% in contact hours. We currently have a record high summer two enrollment with 870 students, a year-to-date year -to increase of 85 students. Overall, we will be at or near record highs for both enrollment and contact hours for the combined summer sessions. Mr. Chairman, that concludes the President's report. Any comments or questions? If not, we will move to the fourth agenda item. Uh, this is the consent agenda uh, concerning financial reports, approval of minutes, and quarterly investment report. And it's all posted and uh, you've received this information. Is there a motion to approve the consent agen agenda and financial reports? I so move. move. Or second. Motion second. All in favor say aye. Aye. That passes aye. unanimously. Yeah. <laughs> Number five, reports. Uh, as posted, uh, I, uh, item A, proposed 2020-21 budget report, Dr. Cantrell. If you all would uh, turn in your packets that you received to section five, and I think it's like the third page over, and it's the budget summary. If you want to look at that, and I'm going to be speaking to that while we scroll down. There's really been very little change at all since our last, uh, the preliminary budget was presented. Uh, we currently have a budget totaling <coughs> revenue and expenditures of $63,040,690. This budget reflects a decrease of 306480 over our last year's, our amended budget that we amended in May. And that, so that changed things a little bit on the increases and decreases for us. But uh, actually we amended it to include the CARES Act fund. So when you looked at it, that was over 2,400 and some odd, 500 and some odd thousand dollars. So it still would have been that had we not amended it for that portion. The only really, the changes that we made to it since we presented it to you were a decrease of 20,000 due to salary and benefit adjustments, an increase of 20,000 in student aid for additional TPEG funds, a decrease uh, from our contingency reserve. And that was an area that we had put some money in because we knew we were going to be needing some more in other areas. So we decreased that 498,000. We increased computer lease adjustments of 58,549, an increase of 100,000 for our equipment and contingency purchase, an increase of 140,000 in utilities, and an increase of 200,000 in major repairs and rehabilitation. I'm going to talk a uh, pretty high level at this point in time. I want to, I gave a schedule to Dr. Farmer yesterday on what we're looking at for the summer. I would uh, propose the second uh, the day of the budget, uh, the board meeting, we will uh, in August on the Tuesday before that, and I have that with me right now, but it looks like it will be uh, that workshop would be proposed on this on August the 4th budget workshop. So if you all would put that down and we'll be getting the other dates to you as we move along. But that's when I plan to go into greater detail and we'll be glad to, you can look at this all summer long and ask me any question you want to ask me by that time. Uh, but with th that in mind, I'm going to talk to you a little bit. Well, Larry. Okay. 
Once again, the proposed budget is $63,040,690. Uh, there's been no increase or decrease in state appropriations of $9,059,678 in the second year, the 2021 biennium. And that's a very good thing because it just has come out in the last couple of weeks that the senior institutions are losing 5% for the coming year. So we survived, the community colleges survived that first cut, or I don't know how many, if there'll be others, but we did survive that one, and they exempted community colleges from that. So that was a great piece of news. The major changes to revenues for the coming year, we had a decrease, it shows to be an increase of a million two forty nine in student aid but actually that was a little bit, I think about $24,000 increase there in student aid when if you take that CARES fund out. The way the CARES fund works, uh, whatever is left that we haven't expended this summer will be rolled into next year's budget if there's funds left. So that could be an adjustment that you'll see in August when we come back. Uh, and then we had a decrease in operating grants. It showed to be a million seven twenty-one one eighty-eight, 188 and that was primarily due to the institutional portion of the CARES Act. Actually, there would have been, if we had not had the CARES Act affecting it, we would have shown 447,000, um, a decrease there. But with that said, we haven't received all of our awards yet for grants. So they're a little bit later coming sometimes, so I think we'll see that will go up. An increase of $2,688,000 in tuition and fees, and do, that was due to the rate increase adjustment that we adopt, you all adopted in March. Local taxes show to be <coughs> increased by $1,234,000, and that represents only at this point in time, we've only sh we're only showing 7.99% greater than what we had budgeted this year. We know there should be more, but we can't do that till they come out and give us the effective in July. And then by the budget workshop, I'll be able to estimate what additional funds will be there because of that. Local funds other decreased by 613,000 due to decreases in Budget donations, no, we hope there's not budget donations. Dr. Farmer may go ahead and give me a figure and promise me he's gonna bring in that much next year. I don't know, if he wants to adjust it, we will, because they've done such a good job over this last year. But uh, basically last year we brought in over, for this current year we brought in over 500 some odd thousand dollars with the Steinway pianos and other additions to the college budget. And uh, then unfortunately we've got to uh, interest rate reductions that we're having to deal with. So that those have dropped some and we all are aware of that. Auxiliary services decreased by 124,211. I think at that time that was turned in and I need to get with uh, Doug Jefferson and Adam and take another second look at that because they did project very conservatively and now that we're seeing a uh, our enrollments and as we go along, and this may be adjusted too by the time we come back in August because as the enrollment adjusts, we may raise that figure too. Our Wise County transfer from reserves currently has decreased by $508,000, which is a good thing. Uh, I, I know we've only got uh, 112000 required to transfer from reserves at this point. So unless something major comes forward, I think that's going to be uh, show very well on Wise County's part. Uh, major changes in expenditures. Uh, we've got a 5% salary increase for all full-time employees, totaling 879000 An increase of 200000 I mentioned that earlier, in major repairs and renovations. Our technology services includes 520,000 for costs associated with the third and final year of the new ERP implementation. And we will be so glad when that is over. <laughs> uh, but that's a reduction in approximately $400,000 in the budget that we were able to do other things with. 
auxiliary enterprises decreased by 25,000 due to a reduction in dormitory expenses, but if we were able to raise those up, there, that could be adjusted too. The more students in there, yeah. utilities, everything go up. Student aid decreased by a million eighteen, and that was due to the CARE Act. Uh, an increase in, we actually, that's where I wanted to mention to you all, in student aid, we're actually up there because we are trans, we're increasing our scholarships at this time, $278,629 for 16 new scholarships added. And I didn't get that written in there, but I wanted to point it out to you. And then we had an increase in utilities of $249,000. Uh, increase in general institutional contingency of 153,000. And basically that institutional contingency, we always like to carry 1% of our operating budget there. And so it adjusts as our budgets adjust. And last but not least, the Wise County budget increased overall by 107,000 dollars, but that was primarily due to the increase of $72,562 that was required for the, the lease. So Wise County is doing very well when we, we look at that, and that lease was a scheduled lease payment. Notes to the budget, as I mentioned before, there's been no increase shown in the Wise County branch maintenance tax revenue at this time. Uh, we always wait for Judge Clark and Ann McQuistion to notify us as to the figure to adjust that to. Uh, we're showing uh, effective, uh, no, appraisals down a little bit, but as I was telling Dr. Farmer, I don't know what the difference is of how Wise County uh, shows theirs and what Parker County, but for some reason, Wise County always estimates low and it comes up a little bit higher usually. So I'm hoping that helps. But I haven't heard any more, we'll hear in July. And then Parker County had already, they've already, uh, they're up, we're definitely up 7.33% or something to that effect. And so I went ahead and showed some there, but there'll be more that we'll add there. Uh, these lines, of course, will be adjusted all through Till we get to August to bring you with that budget workshop and when certified values have been received in late July and proposed rates can be considered. Until the time that uh, we may be determined, Dr. Farmer has told me there there have been positions that we've had that we ever have been frozen and there's some areas that he's still looking at so if funds did become available it's a possibility that we would we would be adding some there. So uh, I wanted to be brief today. I wasn't planning to go into detail, but if there's any question that you all have, I'd be glad to entertain it. And or if you think of it in the middle of the night sometime, feel free to call. I wouldn't be unusual. Uh, <clears throat> now, the only thing I would say is that I, I think that uh, over the, the last few years, I, I think our budget management has just been exceptional. Well, thank and, uh, you. I, 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 I just—it's uh, remarkable, and we're so fortunate that that's going on. We, we've we've been able to raise salaries and and do some things to uh, provide bonuses, and I think Weatherford College is creeping up. Well, not really creeping, steadily <laughs> moving yeah. up yeah. in in the community college uh, list as we start comparing numbers and, and uh, how we stand in, uh, in comparison to others, I mean, we're, I think we're doing well and we're, we're, we're staged to, to do even better, yes. which is just remarkable. And so uh, I, I really hand it to uh, the, the staff, the management, uh, the administration, uh, also the the instructors that are working so hard to to, uh, to pull this off, uh, I think, in light of what's being uh, dealt with over the last few months and where we are now, budget-wise, it's just remarkable. So we're yeah. we're lucky we're in this position because uh, if we were otherwise, it would just really be difficult now. So we got to count our blessings. Thank uh, 
thank everyone who worked so hard to, to make all this happen. And I, uh, Wise County is another area that I feel like has, has really, uh, they're, they're pulling their weight. They're, we're, it seems like we're getting along better uh, than ever before. How do you feel about that, Dr. Marlowe? Well, we just need students. We just need to get them one way or the other. We just need, need students. We're going to get some new leader up there? We're going to get a new leader. How does that make and that, feel? And, that, and I'm assured that it's going to be a top-notch one. Well, with you in there <laughs> overlooking it, I, I know it will be. No, I, I have very little to do with it. But anyway, anyway, I'm looking forward to the, the search and uh, the results. So those are my comments, and I, uh, I really appreciate the board. Uh, <clears throat> we've been we're blessed by a good board, and they work hard. And I think uh, that's a lot. Hopefully, a lot to do with it and get better. What else? That's all I have right now. Okay. Anything? Dr. Farmer, to add to that? I would just echo everything that you said in terms of my appreciation for the team effort, because that's what it truly is, is a team effort uh, to yeah. successfully improve our efficiency and, and reallocate those dollars. Exactly. Appreciate it. And I know that's not a motion, but I'll second it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Uh, as far as reports are concerned, uh, I, I think, if, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Dr. Farmer, but Mr. Indy, uh, we we have those reports uh, provided, and we don't actually need uh, anything verbal today, or do we need to go ahead and move through some of that? that that's correct. Uh, we were going to follow the same pattern that we've done the last couple of months and provide you those reports in writing. Uh, in advance, and then if you have any questions now, we could entertain that. If not, we can do follow-up questions uh, at a later date. Okay. Any I, questions I have, or comments? I, I have a question. More left. I found it while I go, and I mean, I found it earlier today, and then I found it again a while ago. And now I got to refund it. It has to do with Mr. Indy. <coughs> And talking about student evaluations, appraisals, and, and so on, and talking about that the uh, standard deviation had dropped in most of these cases so that there's a, more of a homogeneity with you know, data. But what I was curious about, and, I'm, and, may, and forgive me old memory if I don't get it, get it without finding this sheet of paper, I showed it to you. Uh, Page 79, what you're looking for. So, what, page 79. 79. 79. I don't know if the pages are numbered, but it would be after your budget report, the second page after the budget. Yeah, there it is. Um, it's just a minor question if I can regenerate it. I was looking over this and uh, I was just. Um, It's talking about the mean scores and they're improving in many cases and the difficulty is there. There's a meaning that there's some. But as you know better than I do, um, you can have those kinds of things happening and yet it's still maybe not be high enough. Numbers are improving, but they, they're here. They really should be here. And that's true about all of us and everything that we're doing in this world. So do you see anything that's going on? And I'm, I'm assuming uh, you do, that that uh, would improve the overall of uh, these numbers overall. Is there anything? that you feel <clears throat> just do more of the same and this, no. these numbers will come up or what? I don't want not, that that, not that I'm, that they're bad. I'm not saying that. I'm just... The thing that strikes me is that when we moved our courses online, we found out how good we are online, but we also found out we have weak points. 
Right now we're taking some money that Dr. Cantrell and I have discussed that is part of our Pathways money and dedicating it to Quality Matters. We're buying into the Quality Matters system and we're going to train our faculty in Quality Matters. That's a, a package on teaching people how to teach and learn online and it's mm -hmm. nationally known and that's where I'm looking and I think that's in keeping with what President Farmer has asked us to do to take what is already good and make it better and take what isn't quite where we need it to be. We have an e-learning advisory committee that have set quality standards for online classes. And Dr. Marlette, for me, that is the area where it's most obvious where we could produce improvement and where we could measure that improvement from semester to semester. And COVID-19, if it has a silver lining, it's in that area. That we can transform the institution's online operations, not only for online classes, for hybrid and face-to-face -face classes that have online components as well. Did I answer your question, sir? Well, you know, that's, uh, that's that great question that's running through education today is how much of this is going to stick, how much remote le learning is going to have to take place in the future vis-a-vis -vis the past. And so it seems like you're on it, and that's, that's good. That's what I wanted to hear. And I, and I knew that was probably the case, but I just wanted to hear about it. So thank you very much. I appreciate you. Thank you, sir. What else, Dr. Marwell? Yep. What else? I want you to be happy. I'm not happy. <laughs> <laughs> but it has to do with selling a horse. <laughs> I can't help you. <laughs> so right now, I'm happy. Well, we appreciate you coming down. I have a quick question. You do? Yeah. Okay, just, sure. Just okay. a quick question about the VET tech program. Um, if, if there are 17 applicants, is it likely that all 17 will be accepted in the program? Or is it too early to know that? No, it's not. Those 17 applicants have completed and they've met all the application oh. entrance criteria. Oh. Had we have another it. eight applicants. Uh, they weren't completed. I got in touch with our staff and told them to get on the phone and get them completed. And as of this morning, we've added a <laughs> biology for majors class into the second summer session. So those yes. students who need that pro -rec prerequisite can take it and get qualified for the vet tech program. And we'll make that. Thanks again to President Farmer. If we need to with a smaller number, rather than sending them to somewhere like Dallas County, yeah. we'll take that course remotely. So we're doing all we can to get that number up to hopefully 25 by August 24th. But it's on. Okay. That's good. Good. Anything else, Ms. Cook? Yeah, no, that's it. Thank okay. you. Thank you. All right. We'll move to number six, agenda item number 6A, update on proposed 2021 budget. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, next month, we will be bringing you that update on the uh, proposed budget. And as uh, Dr. Cantrell alluded earlier, uh, we'll soon be providing you with dates of uh, proposed called meetings as we move into uh, budget season. So Teresa will be getting with you shortly uh, on those dates. All right. Anything else on that? No, sir. All right. Okay, we'll move to agenda item number seven, and I will declare that this open session is closed when we uh, when we go into the closed session we will be dealing with the posted agenda items under 7a b and c and with that we'll adjourn the the open session and we'll go back into closed session in about two minutes thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay for the cameras, you better get your mask on. You got a mask. We're rolling. You kind of need to remind me that I left my shades on for half the meeting. <laughs> the time is 3:07, and we are uh, going back into open session. We are officially in open session at 3:07 uh, today, and. We'll move to the next agenda item, which would be uh, item number eight, consideration possible action resolution for purchase of Kingsley property, acquisition of Kingsley property. Make sure that that's... And what I would like to ask, is there a, a motion or a... 
a motion that would make a resolution to acquire the Kingsley property, which is uh, well known and has been discussed. It's a it's a, a very nice property that's located adjacent to across the street from Weatherford College, and uh, there have been negotiations moving forward for several months now for the the uh, college to be able to acquire that property, and that's been satisfactorily uh, uh, we've, we've been able to satisfactorily reach uh, an agreement and so is there a motion that we uh, we officially acquire move forward to acquire the, the Kingsley property and or and enter into a formal contract in writing to uh, accomplish that. Is there such a motion? I'll make it. Second? Sure. Second. Dr. Marlette will second. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. The next item on the agenda would be number nine, consideration possible action transfers from reserves. A, purchase of Kingsley property. Is there a motion that we transfer from reserves the amounts of $500,000 and $50,000 uh, to continue and to ultimately acquire the Kingsley property that was just the subject of the motion in item number eight. Is there such a motion? I shall move. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 That's aye. unanimous. Now then, uh, under 9B, installation of turf, artificial turf on Stewart Field. Is there a motion to uh, transfer funds from reserves in the amount of $315,730 to uh, fund the installation of turf on Stewart Field? I'll make it. Motion made by uh, Dr. Uh, Dixon. I second. Motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Uh, I think that concludes us on the motions. Is that right, Doctor? Yes, sir. Dr. Farmer. All right. So that brings us to number eleven. Adjournment. Is there a motion that we adjourn? I so move. Is there a second? I second. All in favor say aye. 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 That's, an, that's unanimous. We're adjourned. Thank you for your presence and participation.